In 1972, the Wistar Institute became one of the first National Cancer Institute-designated cancer centers in the nation, and the first in Philadelphia. Over the last 40 years, Wistar researchers have helped transform our understanding of cancer science and medicine. This is the story of the Wistar Institute Cancer Center, told in our own words. A story of what happens when researchers are free to follow a course inspired by discovery. Wistar, to me, means tradition, it means history, it means quality. We all have people um, in our lives who've been touched with cancer. Uh, on a personal level, I've had uh, more relatives than I want to count who died or suffered terribly from cancer. It seems like a small institution, and it isn't. It, ha it has um, world-renowned scientists here, and it, it lays the groundwork for so much basic biological research. The simple and single focus of Wistar towards research um, and gives the people that work here an undivided attention to their, uh, to their tasks. Founded in 1892, the Wistar Institute was already a world-renowned research center by the time it earned its NCI designation. Wistar was, and still is, an international leader in genetics, cell biology, and vaccine development. Wistar is known for creating vaccines against diseases like rabies and rubella that are still in use today. By the late 1960s, the Institute had applied its expertise in immunology to study how viruses transform cells, causing them to become cancerous. The Cancer Center Act of 1971 would forever change the course of scientific discovery for the Wistar Institute. The act enabled Wistar to build new laboratories and support facilities to provide a physical space for research discoveries. It also helped that virologist Frank Rauscher Jr., the National Cancer Institute director under President Nixon, saw great potential in Wistar's immunology approach to cancer research. Very early on, when my father became director of NCI, appointed by Nixon in, in 1972, he, uh, he, he said, we must have a mechanism to get these people to work together. We must have a mechanism not just intramurally at the NCI in Bethesda. We must have this spread out to, to researchers uh, in the country, okay? And we must provide a mechanism whereby we can get clinicians talking to basic scientists uh, 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 and to meld these fields. That's where um, the major discoveries are going to come from. And I think that's the basis for what my father and his colleagues at the NCI were thinking about in establishing the Cancer Centers program. The story of cancer research at Wistar represents a microcosm of the last 40 years in the scientific progress of cancer medicine. We used to know almost nothing about the mechanics of cancer. Now science is unraveling the genetic causes of cancer and creating targeted treatments for individual cancer patients. Take Wistar's Menard Herlin, for example. The Herlin lab is at the forefront of melanoma biology, developing ways to kill cancer cells by targeting specific points in the molecular pathways that drive tumors. When Dr. Herlin arrived in the early 1970s, monoclonal antibodies were the next big technological innovation in biomedicine. Monoclonal antibodies are created by taking a B cell and uh, attaching it to, well, let Dr. Herlin explain. The antibodies were made from one single cell and the trick was then to make this one single cell live forever by fusing it with another cell. And this other cell was a, was a mouse cancer cell. And then this hybrid, that's why they are called hybrid domas, this could basically grow forever. Here's what you need to know about monoclonal antibodies. They can identify cancer cells, provide a way to detect cancer, and can actually be a cancer treatment. Today's targeted drugs are designed to attack individual tumors with fewer side effects. All this grew from technologies first developed at Wistar. A place like Wistar is critically important because of its focus, its extreme focus on research. Um, in, in particular, monoclonal antibodies, which is the standard therapy for people with, uh, with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, some of that pioneering work was done here at Wistar. My wife is a uh, cancer survivor. She's had non-Hodgkin's lymphoma for 14, 15 years. Um, as we speak, she's about to go back into another round of chemotherapy with the potential for a stem cell transplant. So this is uh, incredibly personal for me. Wistar was also on the forefront of what is, perhaps, the biggest change in cancer research over the last 40 years, the rise of cancer genetics. Of the more than 38,000 genes that each of us has, have in each of ourselves, only a handful, maybe a couple hundred, cause cancer when they're mutated and uh, uh, we would like to find those genes, clone them, and see why they're different in you and myself and other people and how they cause cancer. We now understand all the parts. We 
understand the molecules, we're starting to understand how they all work together and form networks and pathways, and then how that tumor uh, that has all these very complex changes interacts with the, the host or the body. Basically, the cancer cells are talking to us and they tell us when they hurt. They tell us also, and that's our problem at the moment, how they try to escape the cancer therapies and then we want to catch them as they are trying to escape. This, these are some of the challenges that we have today. Once you understand the mechanisms, then you can target those mechanisms much more precisely. And that's where the future of cancer research is going towards targeted therapies. Now with STARS Changing Cancer Medicine through Team Science, bringing together talented researchers that have the skills and tools to untangle the complexities at the root of cancer. Moving towards an era where what we conduct is team science. That includes building new laboratories, that are big open laboratories where multiple scientists can work together on similar problems. We know that the great advances that have occurred in science have occurred when there's a confluence of ideas. At WISTAR, we want to have big advances. We want to have big impact. More and more um, scientific achievements require multidisciplinary team efforts of individuals that have very different backgrounds and, very diff and can bring to the table very different experiences. The WISTAR Institute is so well positioned to translate those discoveries of new genes into new treatments, new therapeutics, new prognoses, new vaccines to, uh, to cancer. This is the, the major goal that we're going to have for the next 20 years, uh, to translate basic science into things that work at the bedside, powder in a bottle, that when people come through the clinic door, they know it's gonna target genes and alterations in their tumor. Today, it's 2012. 40 years of cancer research has fundamentally changed how we see human biology, disease, and treatment. And again, Wistar is building.